வணக்கம் கிரீட்டிங்ஸ் டு ஆல் இந்தியன் ஃபாரஸ்ட் சர்வீஸ் ஆஸ்பிரன்ஸ் ஒன்ஸ் அகெயின் எ வாம் அண்ட் ஹார்டி வெல்கம் டு ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ டு மை யூடியூப் சேனல் சில்வா ஏ லேட் டு ரீச் கேனபி ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ரெகரட்டிங் ஃபார் நாட் ஏபிள் டு அப்லோட் த வீடியோஸ் ஃபார் அ வெரி லாங் டைம் அண்ட் ஐ ஆம் ஷுர் தட் த கன்சீக்வென்ட் சாப்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் இட்ஸ் வீடியோஸ் வில் பி அப்லோடட் இன் டைம் ஹியர் ஆஃப்டர் friends so far we have seen the syllabus overview of paper 1 with two sections section a and section b today we are going to start with the paper 2 section a and the first chapter under this section is forest management and management systems before going to give the details of this forest management and management system let us go through the contents covered so far in the part one or the chapter one or the section a there are four chapters we have dealt that is the silviculture general silviculture systems silviculture mangrove and cold desert and silviculture of trees under section b started with agroforestry social forestry joint forest management and tribology followed by forest soils soil conservation and watershed management and environmental conservation and biodiversity and finally with tree improvement and seed technology today we are going to see with the paper 2 and with the section a and the first chapter comes under the section a is forest management and management systems friends as we know that a forest in a given area functioning with the different objectives and hence the management of that area differs based on its objectives in general there are three different kinds of landscape which are part of the forest management principle and the number 1 is the natural forest and number 2 is the plantations converted from the natural forest and a number 3 is the plantations or the areas created outside the traditional forest area so these three are the various important landscape for which forest management principles are applied here we will be studying about the various objectives and principles for which the forest management is necessary and also studying about the different techniques through which these objectives and principles are applied or achieved and the stand structure is and dynamics another important dimension in the forest management because stand is nothing but the the kind of trees or the vegetation which are forming or the which are part of the forest area and which differ in terms of species in terms of the sizes and the ages so how the strand st- structure and dynamics play a critical role in defining the various principles also dealt in detail here and another important aspect in the forest management is about the sustained yield relation there is a important terminology comes under this chapter that is the sustainable yield sustainable yield is nothing but the uh, yield comes from the given forest area in uniform or in perpetuity it is nothing but the principle by which the yield getting from a given area is maintained in such a manner that it will not affect the yield of future generation so the the underlying principle that the present day yield should not be compromised should not be go beyond the acceptable level so that the interest of the future generation will not be affected so most of the forest area at present day is managed in such a manner so that the the yield the yield getting from the given forest area is maintained uniformly so that the future generation interest will not be affected so how these uh, sustainable yield is achieved in any given forest area 
will be dealt in detail under this subject or in this chapter and the rotation is another important aspect of the forest management and this is nothing but the age at which the crops are harvested as i mentioned in the beginning that every forest or every plantation is work with the various kinds of objectives hence the rotation utilized or rotation used in any given forest area is also varying it depends on the species it depends on the objectives like for getting the maximum timber or getting the fuel wood or it are <coughs> depends on various parameters so there are five to six types of rotation types we will be dealing in this area and normal forest is another important uh, aspect which is part of the forest management which is also close to the sustainable yield relation and uh, how the normal forest is achieved and what is normal forest and what are the different components by uh, using that any forest can be called as normal forest also dealt in detail it in terms of the growing stuff in terms of the increment and various other factors next we will be also studying about the growing stock which is nothing but the the trees or the stems which is part of the forest area and because again another important term that is the normal growing stock also dealt in detail here and the regulation of yield regulation of yield the yield from any given forest area should be in tune with the or it should be in aiming to achieve the sustainable yield so forest differ in terms of its dimension like the various uh, age classes or various size classes various species but the ultimate aim is to get the sustainable yield so based on the uh, composition of the given forest area how the yield is to be regulated based on different parameters are given studied in detail because there may be a, a forest of uh, the uniform uh, conditions like uh, same age class or same age gradation uh, yield also a very important aspect in in normal forest or in uh, in terms of the growing stock because <clears throat> the ultimate objective of uh, any forest area is to get the uh, sustainable yield in order to achieve the sustainable yield the yield from a given forest area need to be regulated based on the uh, the age or the based on the size of the trees present in the year so there are various techniques or the various formulas available here so that the conditions prevailing in the forest area can be accommodated in such a way that yield can be regulated over a period of time so the different techniques different formulas developed by the various forests will also dealt in detail here and the forest plantation which are another important uh, area uh, known for producing the various yield and uh, known for producing the revenue to the forest department the how the forest plantation created over the period are managed based on different objectives also dealt here followed by commercial forest in addition to that we will be also studying about the uh, overall overall uh, details of the forest cover monitoring and the different approaches used for the forest cover monitoring which include the site specific planning the strategic planning the approval sanction and expenditure monitoring reporting and governance these are part of the various approaches in forest cover monitoring and another significant the management principle which is part of this forest man management is about the joint forest management or the participatory management india is a very vast country and which is known for the evolution of this joint forest management principles as we know that the principle formally started from the state of west bengal but there are various evidences uh, which saying that these principles were evolved over a period of time and we were practicing it for a very long time so at present under the forest joint forest management or the participatory management principle different forests are the i would say that the entire forest area of our country are presently managed under the participatory management principle using the village forest committees 
these committees are technically known as joint forest management committee or village forest protection and management committee or one sanderchan samiti which is known as differently in different state we will be studying in detail about how these village forest committees are formed in different areas and what is the mechanism and what is the role of forest department and what is the role of the committee members and how <coughs> they are effectively functioning in managing and protecting the forest area will be dealt in detail under joint forest participatory management we will be also studying about the micro planning how the micro planning is very important or significant in determining the success of the committee and its principle and how the committee play a critical role in the decision making like the species selection or uh, maintaining the uh, forest area or managing the forest area and uh, also about the the sharing of benefits so in this sub chapter we will be studying in detail about the overall uh, functioning of forest committees working under the participatory management principle friends i tried to give the overview of the chapter that is the forest management and management systems and uh, for friends i try to give the brief of the forest management and management systems and uh, the detailed presentation of every content narrated here will be dealt with the full presentation in the upcoming videos and till then stay tuned silva the ladder to reach canopy best wishes thank you